Hey guys, how's it going? It is Travis Mortz with the Forest Hill Film Lab and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about film speeds. Um, I'm basically going to be breaking down what ISO is and exactly how to understand your film speed and uh, you know what pushing and pull processing is um, and just to, you know things like that just to kind of explain to you guys some of the things that you could do with your film that you might not be aware of. So I guess I'm just going to dive right into it and kind of explain to you guys uh, you know what I've got to say about film speed so here we go alright so what is ISO this is one of the biggest questions in photography because it's the hardest thing to explain to people um, ISO is what it stands for is the International Standards Organization it's also been known as the um, ASA which is American Standards Association and then DIN which is Deutsch something something it's all the same stuff so basically the reason what what ISO is is back in the day when guys were you know making their own emulsions and uh, they were they were figuring out photography they would make an exposure but they had no idea how sensitive their film was so they didn't know how to gain any consistency so what they would do is they would take their film or whatever, and this is also, this is later on too, when films were actually being made, plates or whatnot. And they would take that film and they would, they would expose it at multiple different exposures, okay? Changing the aperture one stop at a time. And they would come back and they would look at that, that negative and they would decide which one looks best. This one looks best. This is the ideal one. Well, how did we expose that one? Well, we exposed it with these settings. And then that would determine the film's speed, rather. You know, the film's, um, the film's the optimum speed. Now, what that means is that it's still somewhat of an opinion when it comes to film speed. You know, of course, Kodak has it set in stone. This is a 400-speed film. But what Kodak is telling you is this film looks best when exposed at a 400 ISO setting you know and it's an opinion it's an opinion that Kodak is giving to you we think that this looks best at 400 ISO which is awesome and usually it does but what that means for us is that ISO is it's up for interpretation so I'm gonna continue explaining so anyways that's how ISO kinda was can you know it was figured out what does what does this film like best. How does this film like to be exposed? And this is what your ISO is. This is your film speed. So here I got some film up here. I got some P32, some T-Max 400, some Pan F. And I, I'm doing mostly black and white films because this it's the uh, most uh, applicable, you know, most practical film. So these are all different film speeds. Now what these film speeds mean is this film is a 3200 ISO film. So that means if you expose it at 3200 ISO and you develop it using a normal developing time, it'll be perfect. It'll be a 3200 ISO film. Now, the thing is, is that if you develop your film longer or shorter, it also determines the film speed because it has more or less development time. So what that means is, if I decide that I want to expose this at 6400, I could develop it longer. And now this is the part, this is, oh man, you know, I, I want you guys to know that when I make these videos, I pretty much freestyle it. Like I just decide I'm going to talk about ISO and I press record. So here's me freestyling it and I'm going to do my damn just to explain it to you. So, you know when someone says, um, man, I got some 400 ISO film, but... I'm going to be shooting a concert. I think I'm going to push it a stop. I think I'm going to push it a stop and shoot it at 800. I think people misunderstand exactly what they're doing. When people are, when you're pushing it a stop, what you're essentially doing is you're underexposing your film. By exposing this at 800 ISO, what I'm doing is that I'm giving it one stop less light. And so, in order for that to even make any damn difference in the end, <laughs> I have to develop it longer. I have to let it sit in the developer longer to make up for that lack of light that I gave it. 
And so this is a problem that I, I think a lot of people kind of throw it around. Oh, I'm going to push this to 1600. Now, if you are pushing something to 1600, you need to be the one developing it because you need to know that it's being pushed, physically pushed, longer in the developer. Because, you know, sometimes you send it to a lab and you say, push it to whatever, but you don't know. You don't know how long it sat in there. It, three minutes is a big difference. Six minutes is, that's one, three minutes is one stop of a push. So, you know, you can't just trust someone else to do it the way that it's supposed to be done because you are shooting it yourself. So, anyways, what that means is that ISO is also determined by development time. So, at the end of the day, all of this stuff is kind of an opinion. It's all kind of fluid, if you will. Um, this is a 50 ISO film, but not if I give it less light. If I expose it at 25 ISO, or you know, that would be giving it more light. Or if I expose it at 100 ISO, that would be giving it less light. And I would have to develop it accordingly. So the reason you would want to push process something is like I said earlier, if you're going to be in a low light situation and basically you need a faster shutter speed because here's my example. Um, if it's sundown and our lens is all the way wide open and we're at 30th of a second and we're out of shutter speeds and we don't have a tripod, that 30th of a second is exposing at 400 ISO. Okay. Well, I'm out of stuff. I'm out of, I'm out of aperture. I'm out of shutter speed. I'm just going to shoot it at 60th of a second because I need to. I have to. I have to shoot it at 60th of a second. That's the wrong exposure, though. That is one stop underexposed. I'm, I'm not giving it enough light, right? So later, I'm going to develop it longer and give those shadows a little bit more time in the soup to come to light. And that's push processing. That's what it is. You're giving your film not enough light and you're saying, I'll take care of you in the development process. Don't worry. I know that those are dark shadows. You know, I know that I didn't give you enough light for the highlights, but I'm going to develop longer and I'm going to make up for it in the, in the dark room. And so because of that, if you're going to push process anything, you need to be fully part of the process. Even when you do color film, especially when you do color film. When I take it to, when I, if I took my roll of film to Mike's photo lab in Sacramento and I said, hey, push this two stops, I need you to. Can I really trust that they're going to actively take this one roll and develop it twice as long? I, I don't know. But because that's what it entails, because that's what push processing is, I don't usually push process. And that's why I'm telling you guys about this video. I need you guys to be aware that pushing your film is not just exposing it differently. You also have to make sure you're doing the job on the back end. And so that also goes for pull processing. Pull processing is a funny one because what you're doing is you're taking a fast film, like a 100 ISO film, and you're exposing it at like 100 ISO. So you're giving it two stops more light. And because of that, you have to develop it for less time. So personally, I don't see a whole lot of benefit in pull processing. I think pull processing is usually done when a mistake is made. If you have a roll of 400 in there, your camera is set to 100, you take the film out, oh shit, I gave this film too much light, what should I do? Develop it for less time. Try to make up for it. It's a, it's a fail safe, if you will. Um, and because of that, this is why film has so much latitude and forgiveness because any mistakes we make in exposing we can make up with developing that is why i'm telling you guys about this because this is very important um let's see this is an old box of film and usually on boxes of film they would have developing stuff like developing information on the inside and i just opened a new one and it just said go to the website oh beautiful here we go and so, yeah, it doesn't have any alternative numbers on here. But um, right here it says, it tells you how long to develop, but it tells you at 400 ISO. So if you go to the massive developing chart, that's where you go to get all development times. It'll tell you how to, exp how to develop this at 800 ISO and 1600 and 3200 and it'll tell you exactly what the time should be 
because with every few minutes, you're pushing that film to a different ISO, if you will. Um, so yeah, this is pretty cool. Oh, it also tells you right here, Microdoll X, if you want to develop it at 200 ISO, you do it for seven and a half minutes. And, and this is another important thing I want you guys to know. When developing, there's two different things that you could push with. You could push with time, so you could develop at 68 degrees, which is your optimum development temperature for longer, or you could develop for the same amount of time with warmer chemicals. So there's two different ways of, of push processing, which is why I'm making this video. I want you guys to really understand how in-depth push processing really is. It's not just a flippant decision you make like with your digital camera. I'm gonna change my ISO real quick. No, 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 you have to f make sure that you hold up your end of the deal. You have to make sure that you're gonna go home and develop it properly, otherwise, you're just underexposing your film like a dummy. Um, so that's really cool. So right here, it also tells you, here we'll even tell you, oh, at Tmax, 68 degrees is seven minutes. That's perfect, right? That's, that's the normal thing. That's what I normally develop at. Seven minutes, 68 degrees. But if you go up two degrees to 70 degrees, drop a minute of, off the time. That's six minutes. And 75 degrees, five minutes. So that means that a seven degree difference is a two minute time difference. And therefore, if you developed your film at 75 degrees for seven, or for, um, seven minutes, you're push processing your film. You're pushing it by having warmer chemicals. Um, these are all different ways of doing it, but they should all be noted. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's see what Elfer's box has. This is also a box from 1999. I feel kind of bad tearing it apart, but. Elfred also, they always have good stuff on the inside. So here we go. Look it. This tells you if you're going to develop it, if you're going to expose it at 50 ISO, and then if you're going to expose it at 25 ISO. So here for Perceptol, it's a five minute development difference. Some of these don't even have any difference at all. That's kind of funny. That, sh that goes to show you. Look it. <laughs> So for D76, it says don't even bother. Just develop it at the same damn time. Because ISO is kind of a matter of opinion. It'll be fine either way. That's what latitude is. And so for an HP5 film, you've got like four or five stops of latitude each direction. Which means that it's a great film for push processing because it has tons of silver on it that's going to remain, it's going to read any bit of light that's in the room. If there's light there, HP5 will pick it up and you can develop the shit out of it until it comes out and shows its face, basically. Um, I wanted to kind of write down on this and show you guys something. So I want you to understand that 200, 400, 800. I've said this in a past video, but you guys haven't seen all my videos, I'm sure. But I want you to see this. So you can understand. I just did apertures, because that's all we really need to see, but it's all the same. But each of these stops in ISO is equal to every stop in our lineup. It's the same as a shutter speed, it's the same as an aperture. So what that means is the differences between ISO is really not that much. It's only a stop at a time. So if you're shooting a 400 ISO film, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna push it a stop to 800, all you're really doing is gaining one stop of light. It's like not a huge, huge dramatic difference. Which means that in your everyday life when you're exposing your negatives, Sometimes you are exposing at 800 ISO and sometimes you are exposing at 200 ISO because that's all that is is a matter of being over or underexposed by one stop and one stop only. So that being said, a lot of guys say, oh, I like to shoot my, I like to overexpose my uh, Portra 400 by one stop. Okay. You mean you like to shoot your Portra 400 at 200 ISO and develop it normal? Same difference. It's all the same. And so the alternative is he could pull that film and develop it for less time and get an even exposure. So um, this video is kind of to explain ISO, what it is. It is fluid. It is a matter of opinion in some aspect because it's all based on development. Um, 
and every single step is the same as an aperture, it's the same as a shutter. When you push your film one stop, you're only getting one shutter speed out of it. You don't get more than that. You don't get, oh, it's 800 ISO, I got all the freedom in the world. No, you don't. You got one stop out of it. You got 60th of a second instead of 30th of a second. That's all you get. So you still can't really run that wild, even if you're pushing two stops. Now you've got 125th of a second in a situation that would call for 30th. That's pretty cool. That's why you would push. Um, I'd like to show you guys like a couple of my photos. So here is some HP5 that's been push processed two stops. So I underexposed it and overdeveloped it. And I want you guys to see that because HP5 has so much silver, these photos don't look any different than a normal HP5 photo would, you know, because I did the part of the process correctly. If I underexposed it two stops and developed it normal, it would just be a dark image. So take a look at some of these photos, and I'll be back in a second. So I, I included a couple different uh, ISOs in there because, you know, it's, it's all kind of, like I said, it's all kind of fluid. But um, now you can see a little bit of what the difference is. You know, you do get a little bit more grain, a little bit more, um, you know, a little more grit to it. But, you know, when you're scanning and things like that, you don't notice it quite as much. When you're making a print, you might notice that extra grain because you're really enlarging it onto a piece of paper. Um, but you know when you're scanning it or you know, just digitizing it you don't notice that grain quite as much um, and these um, these skills are good to know for when you're shooting your film at normal speeds and it's low light I mean this is what I do is when I shoot a I'll shoot a roll at 400 ISO but I'll know that there was some low light stuff on there and I'll develop it a little bit longer to get that detail that I might not have otherwise and it's a safe bet you know it's you can't really like screw it up. You're never going to just have no images. And that's what you guys have to remember. When it comes to pushing and process, pu pushing and pull processing, like it's still not going to be the end of the world. If there was light in the scene, you're going to have some sort of image on your film. That's what the film is made for. But obviously we're always trying to get the best image. So uh, I hope this video was somewhat helpful. Uh, I've been pretty busy lately. I've got a couple new uh, things going on in my dark room. I got two Jobos now. So I'm really uh, ready to ramp up my film processing. Um, I decided to start shooting 8x10. So that's been pretty cool. And I'll talk to you guys more about it in the next video. But this ISO video is one I wanted to work on. So um, thank you guys for watching. And until next time, keep on shooting.